we know that BCG also, those, despite the fact that it's not able to control tuberculosis, has some other effects. For some reason, it promotes survival of children, reduces diarrhea diseases, reduces uh, allergic reactions, and promotes the way other vaccines even work in the body, like hepatitis, or a polio vaccine. Uh, and so, we, it is generally considered that it will be nice and logical to use a vaccination scheme that does not completely remove BCG from the equation. And so this vaccine that we tested in the Gambia, known as MVA, is one of those new vaccines against tuberculosis, which is not aiming to remove BCG out of the way, but rather to come in and help the effect of BCG. And having said that, we were now confronted with when do we apply this vaccine? And we thought it would be better to apply this vaccine during the time that these children are also coming for other vaccines. Instead of having, uh, instead of using a, a system that will make the mothers to come an additional visit for the vaccination, which we all know will be an extra cost to the mothers and it might lead to increase the default in uh, adhering to that vaccination schedule. So we now piloted a system whereby the children receive BCG at birth as they usually do and we gave this new vaccine at the age of four months which is four months after they have received BCG. But at this time of four months it coincided with when they also received other vaccines. And so the aim of this study was to see whether this vaccine MVA85A is safe for children, whether it induces the kind of response we anticipate that will help in fighting against tuberculosis. And the third thing was to see whether uh, it can be given together with the other vaccines the children receive at the age of four months, namely diphtheria, which is for diphtheria, pertussis, whooping cough, and tetanus, as well as uh, hemophilus influenza and oral polio vaccine. So those are the five vaccines that children usually receive at the age of five months in the Gambia. So coming with this other additional vaccine made it the sixth vaccine. So for us to be able to find out the interactions between this vaccine and the other one, that made us to have three groups. And in the three groups, there was a control group that received only the routine childhood vaccines. And the second group received the routine childhood vaccines plus this new TB vaccine at the same time, simultaneously. Then we had a third group that received the new vaccine alone without the routine childhood vaccine. The two childhood vaccines were now given one week after. So when we looked at the effects, we found out that it was safe, which is the good news, well tolerated by all infants. Then the second thing we looked at was to see whether it has any effect, whether this new vaccine has any negative effect on the routine childhood vaccines by looking at the antibody levels of those vaccines. And luckily and interestingly, the antibody levels for the normal childhood vaccines were, not, were, were good. Were, uh, they achieved the protected levels, which is good news. However, we found out that in that group too, that received the normal childhood vaccines with the new TB vaccines, that the response to the new TB vaccine was lower compared to their counterparts that received the new TB vaccine alone without the normal childhood vaccine. Which implies that giving these two groups of vaccines together has a negative impact on the new TB vaccine. Although, you know, these are just statistical calculations, meaning that the level in, in the group that had the new TB vaccine alone the level of response was higher than the group that had the new TB vaccine with the childhood vaccine. 
we don't really know what the level that provides protection is. It might still be that it is good enough, but we haven't reached to that stage. 